Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. And today I'm going to kind of show you how I handle some of my bigger shafting all by myself. Now this is a piece of 2 and 3 quarter inch, 14.4 on the length. It's a little bit over 282 pounds. Uh, this is not my largest shaft that I know, you know, can run in my lathe there. I, I've got clearance to actually run 3 inch through the headstock. And if need be, you can always run a larger diameter out from your chuck, carry it with steady rest, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so you're not really limited to the size of your spindle bore, uh, you're only limited by your imagination. Um, one of the, the ways that I get shafting in and out, you know, you, it comes on the truck, uh, you got to unload it from the truck, you got to get it into the yard, I got to straighten it, and a lot of other things before it even hits the the, the machine shop and gets into the lathe and I like to take and move things around on my dolly my two-wheel dolly here uh, this thing used to be red uh, 20 years ago and I think I put a new plate on the bottom I've already rusted one out because I leave the thing outside and this is another set of wheels and uh, anyhow I cut a notch in here and then I use a piece of rubber hose here and I just split it and I set it into the B and then I have another piece that I put on the band up here. This creates a non-scratch, sticky surface so that you can cradle your shaft. Now, if you want to lift your shaft on and off of this and set it on the other thing, you can do one section at a time and you lift it and you can set it down on your rollers. You can put it wherever you want. Um, and also, once you get in that B, you can steer it back and forth so that you get it laid right in the middle there. All right, then, you know, you. I, you try to get it balanced as evenly as you can, but having it off to one side is not a bad thing either. Sometimes you got a little bit more control, or you might need to steer it in and out where, where uh, you need it offset as far from where your wheels are. Anyhow, let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how I actually roll this from outside and in, into the shop. Um, I normally have just a, a piece of pressure treated block that I sit out here under my sill here. I mean, I, I don't have a modern uh, cement floor or anything else here. I run on a shell driveway and I have a brick entrance here. And uh, in fact, that brick's poking up a little bit. Oh, that's because that rudder right there is. All right. Um, so I put a board in and out. So now I have a ramp going in the shop. Now we set it down and now we're ready to go ahead and pick it with our crane. Uh, I know I say uh, crane, but I meant gantry. Um, and this is our inside gantry. And we've already marked off center line, which is just basically splitting the length of the shaft right in half. And uh, we're going to come just a little bit to this side because I want that side a little heavier because I'm going to bring this a little forward and then I want to kind of want to set it in. And we kind of place it a little bit. Now we'll be able to go ahead and we're going to take and we, we roll each of these legs in a little bit at a time until we get this to go into the hole in the back of uh, the wall behind the lathe here. Alright, now that hole behind the lathe is where we're aiming the shaft at. So it'll go through that direction there and then when we get it halfway in between here and there, we go to the other side and we're actually able to manhandle that, the shaft itself in on the support that I have in the other room and come into the back of the lathe. Alright, for right now I need to get this up above here so that I can roll it forward without it crashing anything. So I just take this leather uh, or this strap here and I'm going to put this hanging on the back end of the shaft there to raise that up so that it's uh, just 
just counterweight is all I'm using it for. And uh, and then I just adjust it in and out so that I'm holding it up without it really swinging way up in the air. And that looks good. Now I just usually pay attention to that at the same time that I'm pushing both legs in and out. And if I have to stop and come over and steady the shaft, I do. Um, but if I go gentle, I found that pretty much I can get it there. And all I got to do is almost get it there. And I'm able to go ahead and push it, release the cable, and then I can get it rolling right in there. Alright. Well, here we go. And I'm just coming over here and I'm just rolling each side just slowly. Okay. Now I'll go over to the other side. Move a few things on the floor here just so I got a smooth path. the camera because when I swing it to get to the hole I am the tripod's in the way all right one more little movement and I'll bring it on this side here so I'm touching the wall pretty much pressure against the wall all right now I'm going to go ahead and take my counterweight off of this thing because once I stuff it into that hole I want the pressure to be downward just a little bit so I bring it back there it goes into the hole slightly all right, now I can give it a little bit of push and my uh, my gantry leg over here, I can bring this in some more. All right. Now at this angle, you can also see that that bypasses the K and T. I'm way in front of the press there, the hydraulic press. And that's kind of the straight shot angle that I'm going to go ahead and push it in there. Now, what I do is I go ahead and grab my, my down cable here. And as I pull down on it, I'm lifting. shaft here and then I can go on the other side of the wall and handle the shaft the rest of the way. Sometimes I do have another person coming out here or even uh, the wife, one of my sons, one of my boys. It does help a little bit but if I'm by myself I'm safely able to get this thing lifted up and get it into this position. All right, so let's go around on the other side and I'll show you how I stuffed it in the hole that way. Okay, I'm over here. Okay, this is like the third siren I've heard go by in the last couple of minutes here. There must be something pretty good happening down here. When I hear a siren, I don't really think, oh man, there's somebody hurt again or whatever. I feel that when I hear a siren, there's another person that has a chance. And without them, we'd all have no chances, that's for sure. And uh, so I live right by the fire, or, yeah, the fire department, and you know we we get uh, a lot of sirens going by here. Plus, we're on the main path to the hospital from a lot of down Cape. All right. Um, we're ready to slide this in, and uh, this is my cluttered room. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. In fact, I'm going to move a few things just so I have some foot room here. All right. 
and this should should clear the tripod and everything else in here but I pull it forward swing it to where it comes through the opening sets on the roller rest just behind the lathe and the wall there and then this is my rest on the inside and when I'm running this diameter and three inch I'm pretty much right down on the bottom I might be up a, a quarter inch or so I just had a 14 footer in here uh, last week and uh, so this is like two 14 footers within a couple weeks which is which is um, rare I mean it just hasn't it doesn't happen every day all right so I get pulling it in so I only have to handle one half of it once it comes off of that rail there I'm able to pivot it right there and then shove it into the hole here. Alright, now we're ready to go around the other end and check out our chuck. Alright, now that uh, I've got it through here, I do two things here. I go ahead and I'll move my carriage back now that I, I move my crane or my gantry back that way there. I got some room to get away there. And then I'm going to go ahead and snug up the jaws a little bit and then I'm going to adjust this roller after I pull that uh, rag out of there so that I'm centered with the bore of the back of the spindle. And then uh, the chuck will be running true. I'll go squirt a little oil on that, that uh, Delrin pad on that foot that's supporting on the other side over there and we should be able to start uh, machining uh, and that's how we support this shaft for the machine work now like I said you can't do any work on a shaft until you straighten it first so and I had this out on the rollers and I straightened it yesterday and it was only running out about three and a half thousandths in the middle the rest of it was like right on the money and now the whole thing is right on the money good we'll go give it a little squirt of oil on the back and we'll give it a spin we'll see how it spins spinning shaft uh, we can go ahead and we can adjust this and uh, we go ahead and, and we set this up put, excuse me, put the center drill on the end of the shaft and then we'll start going all right I just had a chance an opportunity to give you guys a glimpse at how I take something that weighs 282 pounds and put it in a lathe and also its length this is 14 inches long two and three quarter inch diameter and um, and I had to laugh because just as I was shoving it through, the wife was getting ready to go to work down in the carousel for the day. She saw that it was coming through. She kind of heard me back there. She didn't know who I was talking to. Of course, I was talking to you guys. And uh, so she, she helped me a little bit. She's on her way. And anyway, we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue on. We need to get the shaft out. Uh, we had, this was waylaid uh, because the truck broke, delivery truck broke down, which is, uh, you know, we've had one time and four or five years that Severance uh, wasn't able to get it here when we wanted it. But uh, we got to put the push on it and I just wanted to take five to show you how I get one in, in and out of the lathe here and we'll machine this in and when I get done machining this in then we bring it on out, we take it outside, we turn it around, we bring it back in and we'll do the other end. Uh, this is a double tapered shaft uh, so Hey, we might give a couple glimpses uh, just to tag at the end of the video here, just kind of show you some highlights of how the shafting uh, work is done. We have given you quite a bit of shafting videos 
and this is no different it's just a little different size a little different length they're all pretty well handled exactly the same way all right guys get her done all right now we're getting ready to cut this keyway in here now this is a wheel cutter and I hand grind the radius on both the corners to create the proper radius for the bottom of the keyway and then after I cut the keyway then I go ahead and I shape the radius at the top of the keyway and both of those are required to keep minimum or maximum strength in your keyways and minimize the start of cracks. Now we've got this set up and I gotta work the gantry and the mill table at the same time to have a stress-free travel on this. But first we're going to establish zero as far as the height and centering side to side with a touch-off cut. I get this light down here so that I can play the light because I stare at it from this back side and then I go ahead and I've got my dial free so I can set it at zero and then I crank the table back and forth and uh, when the table gets tight, I know where I'm at here and I count my clicks on my chain fall because I know how much that actually brings me up and stress frees the, uh, the table itself and I like to keep those set come to the final depth, I know pretty much how much tension's on there. Just going a little bit at a time and going back and forth. And I know the day is getting a, a little tight, so I bring another clip here. Flat's looking like about a half an inch. About 9 sixteenths on the width now. We're trying to match the 5 eighths on the cutter. do it now. Now staring down and, and seeing our light of the flat there lining up with the flutes of the, the wheel cutter. Alright, when the light gets just right you can see that you're actually centered. We lock the table. And then we double check it just to make sure that there's no table pull. Okay, now we're centered. And we lock our dial down here at zero. That's zero on the depth. We lock our table side to side, and that's the path that we're going to go down through there. Now, we're going to go ahead and we've got to move the shaft back. We're going to hold our brake here so the backlash doesn't interfere. We're going to slowly bring it back till we hear no more cutting. Okay, that means we're at the end of the shaft, at the very edge of the minor diameter of the paper. Alright, now we give it a little bit of a 
take all the backlash out of the leaf. Mm -hmm. We lock this, and now we got ready to go for our depth. Now we can go ahead and give our, our coolant. A steady flow. Now our depth on this key is going to be 300 and 16 to 325 thousandths uh, on the depth there. So that's going to be uh, a little bit of a journey to get down there and then once we're level off we're going to do it in one pass. So we got to raise a little bit and then we're going to be raising our uh, chain fall or our lifting device. Here we go. All right, there's one check on the depth there uh, because we don't really want this is so big that we got to move so many things if uh, if it's not the right depth and we happen to had to come back and, and create another pass um, we, we don't really want to do anything other than cranking our table all the way back finding our zero stop start spot and then go ahead and increase our depth there but I'm sure that we are well within that depth all right now there's a little raised burr on there so we're probably going to be a little heavy. Uh, this is uh, 332 or 327, excuse me, 328. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and just knock that burr off of there real quick. right on the money. All right, we pull off our wheel cutter and arbor, getting ready to swing this head around. We are against my cupboard behind my desk over there, and I don't see enough room in here to really run the drills. 
So we're going to go ahead and lower this down and we're going to go ahead and turn around our whole assembly. We're going to set up our universal head pointing in that direction and then we're going to go ahead and hang this from the davit outside and put the butt end in here because we need to go ahead and put a three hole pattern right there in the end of the shaft to hold this plate on. So here we go. As soon as I finish my banana. I know the lighting's not quite right here, but uh, you can see that the shaft outside shelves and stuff like the right out there, so it's kind of making it dark again. And I'm located on my first hole, and I'm just trying to drill it out down to the depth that I need. And I break the chip every once in a while. This aquamet material is very tough, and this is just a high speed steel drill bit, and I'm keeping the plus two on it. this come and I'm, I'm just scaling the depth here because basically that's all we're doing right here all right looks like we're deep enough so we're gonna go ahead and back this out and we're gonna put a camper on the hole and then we'll thread it all right now we're, we're we've got the tap ball over here and we are just using our presser wrench to do this because we're so close on the throw here we can't put a regular tap handle on here and we can't be running this thing in and out too much we lose our grip on our crane and level out there and this tap just happens to be in one of the collections we have and it's a real nice tap all right we're all the way down to the bottom all right now we'll remove this pull it out and then we're going to put one bolt in put our plate up there and then we're going to locate the next hole. That was Oyster Harbors on the uh, on the phone there, kind of wondering where we're at with the shaft and I told them we were still on schedule, exactly what uh, I announced the day before yesterday after we had the severance truck breakdown on Friday and we didn't get the shaft last week, we got it on Monday, late Monday. But everything's everything's always a panic. <laughs> That's why we have a job. Looks good in there. Tighten that up, line up our plate here with our key and everything else. We look good and center on the, uh, the mark we have on the end here. And we're going to go for the next hole. Uh, we're, we're doing it this way because we're actually hanging off the crane. We don't have no way. It's not like the horizontal boring machine where we got a good solid rig. we got to kind of really make sure that we're parallel and, and, and clamped in the vise and checking with feeler gauges or a flashlight. And, and uh, so there's a lot of um, idiosyncrasies about doing it, but we are able to do it this way and uh, 14 foot away is the ass end of the shaft outside hanging on the crane. <laughs> 